It's the second tallest building in El Paso. It was built as a bank building with 18 stories in downtown El Paso, right across the street from the plaza. On any given day, on any given floor of this bank building in El Paso, Texas, professionals are busy plotting the course of profits and high finance. Most folks would walk right past this door down on the first floor, where just inside, Adair Margot and Sarah Prezioso keep watch over the individual cataloged collection of an American master. That's, he always said he had another book in him, but he never, he never did it. Tom Lee was a native El Pasoan. He showed very early talent as an artist, was trained as a muralist. It was the 1930s. America was caught in the grip of a suffocating depression. The government launched programs to put people back to work. One such effort under the Works Progress Administration put out the call for artists to compete for work. El Paso native Tom Lee was picked to be one of the now celebrated WPA muralist in an effort to beautify government buildings and public places across the country. Many of these works were done in Texas and have now become historic treasures. Adair Margot spent years with Tom Lee, cataloging his works and capturing his stories. Lee died in 2001, but the brush strokes of a humble, quiet man blazed a trail across Texas. He's embedded everywhere. He is embedded everywhere, and people don't know it. You know, in Chicago is where he learned how to do murals, and there are still murals that he did there. But in Odessa, you'll find the stampede. It's just an awesome mural based on the cowboy poem, A Little Joe the Wrangler. Up in Seymour, you're gonna find Comanches. In Dallas, you're gonna find Texas Centennial murals. In Galveston, he did the first recorded surgical operation in North America, which is Cabeza de Vaca taking an arrow from an Indian's chest. He did one in uh, Washington, D.C. that's lost for the Ben Franklin Post Office. A couple of them are lost. He never became a household name. Tom Lee said that this was a mural really he took the most pleasure in doing. He didn't work any harder than he did on this one. Of course, in 1938, when he's painting this, there wasn't security and they weren't building all this out. It's been called one of the most iconic WPA works of art to survive all these years, housed inside the old federal courthouse building, not far from Adair's Tom Lee Institute. 11 feet high by 54 feet wide, there are 50 pounds of Rembrandt paint in it. There's so many people that don't know that this is here, and it used to be a functioning courthouse, so it inspired a lot of lawyers and people who would come in to do business. Now we have a new courthouse. So this, are, they house other federal offices here. So he was a muralist, and he did illustrations. He'd met J. Frank Doby, so he ended up doing illustrations for his books. That really brought attention to him, to someone in New York who ended up inventing Life magazine. But here you'll see, like this is, he was What's the that? first James accredited Green, artist with way, Life magazine. He started in the North Atlantic with the Navy, was in the South Pacific, and then he ended up by landing with the 7th Marines on Peleliu. It was a very bloody slaughter. In fact, when I saw Hacksaw Ridge, I thought that had to be what it was like. And Tom Lee chose to go with the Marines. He was a civilian. He chose to land with the Marines because he said, I knew if I didn't, I'd be a fake. He said there were many artists who painted from news reports, but he chose to land with the Marines. This was done aboard the USS Hornet, where he was right after Jimmy Doolittle took off in April. He went on in August, and he was aboard for like three months. Everybody knows his work if they read Life magazine during World War II. Then he comes back from the war, 
knows he can't just paint things because he's seen heroism. He's seen the interior of people like he'd never seen it before. So he turned to writing and he wrote his own books and he wrote two best-selling novels that became movies. So do you think that there are people in El Paso that have Tom Lee in their attics or basements and they have no idea what they have? I get calls from friends who are out at estate sales and they'll find prints and they're signed and I'll tell them, you know, well, this is what I sold it for, so pick it up. Yeah, I'll get it. So the Antiques Roadshow, I mean, they even showed a piece from high school and I think they valued it, you know, it was high school and it was sort of this exotic Moroccan woman or something like that. And um, I think they valued it at like $8,000. I thought, well, they know. When Tom died, he, he, his, his wife gave me his drafting table. It's so an it's enormous neat, task neat, that yeah. keeps Adair and Sarah busy promoting and protecting the legacy of Tom Lee. Somehow they it, found it time like to map that. out the yeah. Tom Lee Trail across Texas, approved by lawmakers in Austin and signed into law. All because more than 20 years ago, this former art gallery owner found her true passion was merely being in the presence of only one artist. I've decided I showed over 400 artists from 12 countries. I learned from all of them. I love many of them. But when I had to start focusing, I thought if I have to preserve one person for posterity, it is Tom Lee. What I got to experience is beyond his work. It was him. And I guess all you have left is his work, you know, to share with people. And so you try to do it through his work. Of course, I think every Texan should know who Tom Lee is. Of course, everybody should know him. Uh, every American should know about his work. And I really think people in the world should know his work.